This is Dr. Villa. So uh, this is the, uh, I should say, continuation or part two of the, uh, you know, aging process discussion. Last time, our first uh, podcast was actually we had the uh, the Generation Z, right? Yeah. So uh, I'm trying y. to cover the X Y, y Z. They were Y. They were Y. Yeah. No. Yeah. We're, we're Generation X. You are Y. We're X. We're Y. No. You're Y. <laughs> oh, we're having a discussion I here. Thought, wait, hold on. It's X, Y, Z. I thought Y was born you're, in... You're, you're millennial. millennial. But I thought Y was born in 2000 and above. Uh, well, there are four. But X, Y, Z. They're okay. the millennial <laughs> segment of our generation, okay? So the first one was the younger one. And so... Uh, we're going to discuss about aging again, the aging process, how it affects them. I want to get the perspective of this generation, what, how they see it and what are their concerns, um, basically. And uh, let's see, because by understanding how they view the aging process, you know, as a physician, I can actually kind of... Uh, Formulate, or it gives us an idea how we're going to tackle this issue because it gets these issues are translated into medical issues for the most part. That's the way I see it, and uh, obviously that's how we prevent diseases. Well, the, we usually discuss uh, other stuff aside from diseases, but okay. Uh, I'd like to introduce to you my guests for today. There are like three of them, and. They are millennials. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is Bree. Bree, say something a little bit about you. Hi. Um, I am turning 31 in a couple months. Um, I, I don't know. Came from upstate New York. Now I'm down in Florida. Uh, Health-wise, you know, I guess we'll talk about it. But um, yeah. it's definitely, I think, my views have changed um, since being younger, but at 30, I think, you know, it's just stepping into a brand new, you mm. know, decade and it's just a different mindset than in my twenties already. Yeah. So how about you? Good morning. I am 36 years old and she's Eileen. This is uh, Eileen. <laughs> And a lot has changed in health and myself. You fluctuate up and down, and you always want to stay in the positive area where your wellness is just number one, and you're just your mindset is still focused on your main goals. Mm. So. And. You know him very well. This is already the third time that I've had him. So I think people are getting to know Stephen already. Uh, you want to say something about yourself? Just, you know, sure. for them to have... <laughs> uh, really? <laughs> okay, that's Stephen the art. You're going to know about him more in, in the future. So, well, let's get started with... The discussion of aging. I I uh, would like to know exactly at this stage of your life, what are your concerns? How how you see the aging process exactly? I mean, concerns or issues and uh, what have you. So, what comes to your mind? Because the yeah. I, I'll give you an example. The first generation. Mm -hmm. They're not concerned about about how they look. You so the looks wasn't a concern for them. So I want to see. I, okay. I think the first thing that came to my mind was like joint muscle health, because supposedly, like in your early thirties, you're at your peak of 
you know, uh, muscle energy wise. Um, but like I've had like bone joint, pro- like not problems, but maybe like cracks that have never been there before or pains <laughs> that have never been there before. Um, and then a lot of like autoimmune stuff is really big right now. Um, so I think that that is my biggest concern or yeah. focus. <laughs> yeah. I would say uh, joints, uh, muscle aches, pains, but definitely weight is something that you say when 30 hits, uh-huh. it stops. So it's like you always want to try to balance your diet to try to not gain that particular way but because you got holidays or stressors you tend to kind of hold on to it sometimes too so even eating right is always such a hard thing because we don't always eat well too so i am really uh surprised that they're already mentioning about bones that are achy and all at this Mm -hmm. stage of the game but i i can tell you medically really i age of 30s you guys have to be aware that that's actually the start and uh, start for the hormones to decline it's declining and depending on your lifestyle it's going to decline much more usually uh, the hormones decline one to three percent but depends on your lifestyle it can decline even more than that when I say lifestyle, it, it's your diet, obviously, and how you exercise and the amount of sleep that you get. And then, obviously, the um, toxins that you have in the environment. It will play a lot of role. And this is the start, really. It's at the age of 30 for both uh, males and females. I'm making this comment already because it's a common complaint. And... That's how it's going to be. Nobody is exempted from that. So that's the medical explanation for that. And so, you know, you have to do certain stuff that, uh, you you know, you prevent it from happening fast and you prevent it from going into actual disease. Okay, Stephen, anything that you have to say? But that's the explanation of that. You're not exempted from that. Testosterone... You know, mm-hmm. all um, the hormones, yeah. You know, for age, um, just uh, just looks. That's it. I'm not worried about all the rest. I'm really not. <laughs> I'm not, honestly. <laughs> I don't feel any of the other things. I feel fine. <laughs> I feel completely fine. The looks? Yeah, oh, really? like gray hair and stuff. Like, I'm getting it on my chin, getting some in here. Uh-huh. I, had, I, had a, I had a girl, like stand over top of me and then start looking through through my hair and gray hairs. So that, you know, <laughs> that's the only issue I have. Oh, okay. really? Yeah. Well, that's still an Here indication again. that the <laughs> aging, yeah, that's still an indication that the aging process is actually setting in. Mm-hmm. You know, the gray hair, the same thing. It, uh, you know, comes out depending on... Uh, the lifestyle. I don't, mean that, sound, I don't mean to sound vain or anything, but it's like, yeah. I don't feel any physical stuff. Like I'm not. I can run just as far. And everything, okay. you know. But it's just the. Oh, I don't. My achy bones. All I gotta say is like my ankles, my knees, and then starting yeah. my back. But you know, the, uh, thirty. Wait a second. I'm. 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 I'm gonna tell you, like uh, menopause. And andropause, menopause for women, andropause for men, it will start really, you know, in general or or uh, uh, for everybody, it starts like in the 40s. But you see, I mean, you can kind of mm-hmm. starting to have a glimpse, you know, mm-hmm. at that. Because there's such a thing as what we call climacteric arthritis. And you really are going to have achiness and uh, inflammation and all that just because your hormones are really dropping dropping fast. Mm. And so... I also so, notice that my, hang- mm. my hangovers are worse if I have a hangover. Really? Yeah, I don't drink much, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, if you drink, then... Actually, you guys want wine? <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 So the gray hair, the gray hair, and, and the hangover. Somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and the hangover. No, so 
so then you can actually feel, or oh, probably you're just paying attention more. Or per, I'll definitely you know, agree with the hangover thing. The hangover? Yeah. yeah. In my 20s, oh, yeah. it was like I could wake up the mm. next morning, be fine, go do everything, and now I'm like, uh. So physically. <laughs> that was the first sign. That was definitely the first sign. I was like, oh my God. Yeah, it can. <laughs> so it doesn't matter how much or the amount of alcohol that you consume, or yeah, it's no. just like, you know, you have to drink a lot to feel that. No, no I have like I used to be like two, three beers and two beers maybe, and I'd feel it. And time. you're down, <laughs> really? <laughs> maybe not two for me, but yeah. yeah, definitely way less amount than in my twenties would yeah, make yeah. me feel. Not two for me yeah. Either, but. So, <laughs> so, 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 well, um, anything else from this physical, you know, point of view or health point of view, uh, aside from that, anything else that you're concerned about or um, anything that you think about contribution to anything? I think it's a I little nerve-wracking at <clears throat> this point because... Like, mm-hmm. my parents are getting older, so seeing them go through things that I haven't seen them go through, like, health-wise, uh, uh-huh. um, is definitely a big change and different, like, you know, for me, and their friends are, like, passing away and stuff, so their yeah. anxiety and stress about that makes me a little anxious about their health. So, oh, so about, you're concerned about um, or like that's age, how I'm going to be the when aging I'm... stressors yeah. too because a lot of people go through depression at their older age so it kind of mm-hmm. sets you up like do you need to prevent yourself from getting overwhelmed when things happen like that yeah and we see a lot of grievance depression sadness yeah. overall your health is not well, so how do you balance yourself even on that aspect too? Uh-huh. You really want to try to prevent yourself from getting into a rut or even thinking in that negative sense because you just want to be the best and ultimate that you are at this time because this is mm-hmm. like our prime right now. So we want to be active motivated and helpful for the other generation that's coming in and also learn from the other generations that Mm -hmm. are there from the Mm -hmm. past too so Uh, you know that's very real you know because you can what i'm saying by real is you can actually see what is happening with your parents Mm -hmm. as you get older and you're Mm -hmm. already obviously old enough to realize what Mm -hmm. it means Mm -hmm. you know and so you are thinking about what's happening with you and you are reflecting on what is happening with your parents. Um, uh, you know, this is for real. They're actually <laughs> interfering. <laughs> or, huh? This is live. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, they are. Uh, there's a patient problem. Uh, Stephen, sit down. <laughs> let, let me just... I, I'm coming back. Uh, I just need to uh, solve a problem with a patient and it cannot wait. They don't know that we're having a podcast. So <laughs> I have we are to, live. <laughs> yeah, we are live. What can I do? So, in this sense... Yeah. It is true, though. You really want to focus on ultimately preventing yourself from being ill, mm-hmm. from being sick, from mm-hmm. seeing your parents. Yeah. Or grandparents or great grandparents. Right. Age and ill. And I think, like, with the stress that you mentioned in general in life, um, I don't know if it's. It's not necessarily more happening more often, but we're recognizing it more often, or it's more available to see other people's. Like, I'm coming back. Sorry, Bree. <laughs> oh, that's okay. But okay. So I guess like just social media wise, in general, it being so big right now. Um, I was just touching on stress in general, yeah. and not necessarily comparing, but like seeing everyone's 
best self, I would say, on Instagram or Facebook or whatever because people just show their best selves and then you're, you know, at home and you're seeing that and it's like you compare, which is a stress, and then it can, you know, wreak havoc. So the social but media affects... I think it's an influence, yeah. Yeah, our affects energy. our aging yeah. process. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. It is, definitely. Yeah, it, 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 it Mental health and, yeah, stress leading to the autoimmune, disease, you know. Yeah, <laughs> so both negatively and positively yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Brie has been mentioning autoimmune disease, you know, yeah. at this early stage. Obviously, the autoimmune disease can happen at any age, and mm -hmm. it has a lot to do. And I'm gonna uh, emphasize or stress this to the viewers or to the public that autoimmune disease nowadays um, is actually mostly related by what we put in our mouth that's number one so the food mm -hmm. the food has a lot to do with that so the aging process is going to be affected by what we eat and then you know stresses mm -hmm. the autoimmune disease can be caused by that because when you have stress the havoc that it causes inside your your body is so much and obviously, if you have an autoimmune disease caused by something else, when you have stress, it's, it's aggravating. It's mm -hmm. aggravating and it makes the disease even so much more or uh, more complication and, and the gravity is, is just so much. And so food and stress, you have to take care of that at, this, at any point in your, in your life anyway. And that could probably lead to the weight gain and everything else like that. If you're not yeah. eating right, obviously, you're mm -hmm. not exercising or you're not doing those things to help better yourself, too. Yeah. Exactly. Or even those problems yeah. that we have in our age. Mm -hmm. And even if you have so much stress and doing all the right things, like, you, you won't lose weight. So, like, mm -hmm. for example, like, so I like have a bunch of food allergies which I think is related to stress and autoimmune type of things um, and I went on like a um, you know elimination diet it's called but it was during a point in my life where I was super stressed mm -hmm. going like was engaged calling it off and doing all the right things I wasn't losing weight at all wasn't feeling good mm -hmm. called it off changed my life and like without doing the diet, like dropped weight like that. <laughs> oh, okay. So that's that's a very good, um, yeah, um, point or a very good, um, what do you call this idea? You know, really, just uh, emphasize again. It's the food. It's the food. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm wondering the because uh, this is again. You guys are in your thirties. What is the, uh, what do you think about uh, problems on substances, whether it's alcohol, uh, whether, whatever, whatever substances that's available out there. And um, I want yeah. you to say something about that because, you know, the substances and all that uh, obviously will affect the way we age, you know. Uh, Again, it's something that you consume. It's something that you use, you know, just like the food. It has big effect or significant, you know, uh, effect on our how our body functions, whether it's, uh, you know, on a short term or in the long run. Or in, So what are your experiences on that? Because I want, you know, you know. people... Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but not very long. <laughs> okay, so How many people are watching this? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> and you guys, I know these people, okay? <laughs> it's, such, it's such a big coping mechanism, whether it be alcohol, whether it be THC, whether it be CBD. It's a coping mechanism, but you have to realize that it's also a negative effect on your body. Regardless how you want to do it, it's it's it might dull some senses and make you feel good, but ultimately those chemical receptors it changes your composition, it changes your mindset, it changes everything in your system. Mm -hmm. So 
I mean, when it comes to chemicals and trying to, um, to use it, trying yeah. to use it, you have to realize that there's also that positive and negative effect to it too. Yeah. You can't be so dependent on it because ultimately it's, it's just still a falsetto that comes over you and it makes you not mm -hmm. be exactly who you really are too. Mm -hmm. It kind of creates a different reality, right? It is a yeah. different reality. Yeah. Well, it depends on the substance that we're talking about. The effect of that long-term or short-term on our body, we, you know, we can discuss that another time because it's it, it's a very, for one thing, it's a very big topic and it's a very sensitive topic, especially now that, you know, like, in, in Florida, our the marijuana, MMJ, just became legalize and uh, it's uh, for medical use now so I mean we can have a separate discussion on that so that you know a lot of people will uh, mm -hmm. you know will gain things on that but mm -hmm. what do you think Brie on um, substances I know? think well it's I guess less from like college years so you know in a sense that's <laughs> a good thing but it's still very much a social you know thing um like i live in yeah. orlando in the city so you know everything is right there and you know friends go out and do mm -hmm. dinner or just go out downtown so it's it's very much i think a social thing still i don't know if that will ever go away or mm -hmm. that will ever change mm -hmm. but um i guess after the college years and you know it being social for me it's you know, there's a fine line between it being social and then, you know, yeah. nightly or, you know, when you're at home alone or and whatever. It's a it's a delicate kind of line. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I think that alcohol is still the most commonly consumed substance. Yeah, it, anyway. until until they legalize everything else. Uh, what do you mean? Until they, like, like, when I was living in Portland, Oregon, alcohol was way less consumed than it is in Florida. And uh -huh. I think one of the reasons is because of legalization, openness to other things. And there's other things that... Like, I'd rather smoke cannabis than but drink. Alcohol. I, I do that all... I do mm -hmm. that anyway. I mean, I don't deal with patients, so... But either way, but I, yeah. worked, in, I worked in marijuana for a long time, and I was, I was growing, I everything. And yeah. I'm pretty used to being around marijuana. And um, mm -hmm. um, I think psychoactive plants in general are a totally different section of... of substances compared to like mm -hmm. cocaine or what the, the thing is culturally an issue in the United States. The United mm -hmm. States is a, is a culture of overconsumption in general. Cigarettes. Uh, like, I have no problem again. with tobacco. I use tobacco occasionally, but yeah. I don't use it in the way that Americans use it. I'd say like, or I'm an American, but I'll go to the store and buy a pack of Marlboro. <laughs> you're talking reds. like as if you're not yeah, American. Yeah, like, okay, hey, okay. <laughs> Um, Sorry, but, Americans, yeah. okay. yeah. These Americans, yeah. they, you know. That's, you know, not, know that's like Italian. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Know from New Jersey. Uh, but, <laughs> from Italian, from Jersey. I'm not American. Yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah, so um, I, I think there's a big difference with, with yeah. that, though. Like, it, it, you know, buying a pack of cigarettes is terrible for you. I mean, that mm -hmm. tobacco is garbage. It's like the, the way that it's, it's okay. rolled, the paper. Thank you. So I think the consumption of substances in general, it depends on, it doesn't matter what age to me. Yeah. I don't have no issue with it with people. I've seen kids, I know there's kids that, that they give mm -hmm. psychoactive substances to down in South America all the time. And there's mm -hmm. no problem with that. There's peyote but ceremonies. It's in, the, in a different context. But it's in a so different it's, context, a different yeah. understanding. There's education. Yeah. There's a yeah. lack of education in the United States with mm. that. Because mm -hmm. of the, the the legality issues, so yeah. people think alcohol is their option. Wait, the things are legal and people are educated. Alcohol yeah. would be just a normal side thing compared to everything yeah. else. I mean, you know, people will just go out and enjoy things that they feel yeah. like benefit them. Mm -hmm. And that's that negative stigma that it's had on for so many years, though. I, I mean, you've mm -hmm. always been said this is a gateway for everything. No, really, it's more not. alcohol. Nicotine and yes, cigarettes. Because at age eighteen, you can go to the store and get a pack of cigarettes. And get it, but yeah. they start at fourteen, thirteen. Yeah, younger and younger and younger they start. At these, mm -hmm. Now it's vaping. Yeah. 
Like, uh, you know, just like anything, the uh, substances, they have their own history, how it came about, you know, as part of the culture, as part of the, you know, the medical uh, field or as a treatment, like the medical marijuana. I mean, I certify people, you know, I give it, but it is a very strict and very strict indication we have to make sure that the uh, diagnosis or the indication is really there. How it's going to be uh, done in the future, I mean, it's something that we have to experience so that we can modify things according to uh, the needs or, you know, because it's only when... Uh, I'm not condemning the recreational use but you know when you do it recreationally and the uh, doctors are not involved we didn't have we don't get a uh, formal information as to what it's really doing to you and plus when it is out there recreationally we really don't know what else is in it you know because they make some permutation and mutation or mixes of that and so I mean, now that it is legalized here or for medical use, and then that's going to be, uh, we're going to have uh, like a formal data, more or less, you know, that we can really say this is, you know, what it does to you and all. But we have so much data, actually. I, I, you know, I, it's been in use for so long I and think, all. I think education comes from personal interaction, not even just using it. But I learned more about cannabis when I was growing it. I mean, I started mm. to understand what I was using, and I started to understand how what the differences are, how it's related to even the tomato mm. plant. How I think there's a big. Di I, I think that the whole industry is bogus uh, unless you can grow it. I don't <laughs> consider it legal at all. <laughs> yeah. Unless, yeah, why can't I? Why can't I? I have to go to a store to buy it. That makes no sense uh, yeah. to me. Okay, but that's not my opinion. Mm -hmm. All right. So, what about in terms of? Um, now, I asked this also to the younger one, the Generation Z. It's not Y, you're the Y. Well, what about the, what about like... I'm X. What about the, like, I have a three and a half year old. What about, is she... Oh, she's not classified she's not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> that is zero. Hey, hey, hey. Zero <laughs> one. I'm like trying no. to push you off of the back. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's leave Z alone, there, right? Hey, hey. I, we have to look at that if there's classification yeah. already. I guess it, you are considered whatever, part of that generation we can, you, when you can already give your opinion. Yeah. I mean, a three-year-old, what are you? A zero, one, or A, or yeah. something. Blue. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they are the future generation, yeah. you know, just coming out. You know, in terms of, uh, as you age, how do you look at, my, my question was, uh, how do you look at, you know, when uh, your spirituality or uh, your contribution to the world or something that, mm -hmm. like that I asked the younger generation they actually have had good answers yeah the the two young ones that we mm -hmm. had yeah so what what do you see so I'm not just talking about the medical uh, you know issue but they're kind of intertwined because if you're not doing anything about the environment that's how you get exposed to toxins and mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. and so I mean, I know this is another sensitive issue, especially now, whatever is going on right now. And I'm not going to go into that. The, right now, what's happening in America is very sensitive. And it, it kind of, it's either gives you a very strong emotion or gives you heartache. No, so, no. I just want to see what, how you guys view, you know, humanity or, I mean, your personal uh, stuff when it comes to that. You think, are you contributing to the world or well, I think something like, about that? Spiritually, I've definitely grown leaps and bounds in like the past, I don't know, like eight-ish years. Um, I mean, I, I never grew up being religious and I didn't go to church and, you know, I was... It's, I guess, because of the internet that has brought a lot of information um, that you need to weed out for yourself and have your own opinion on. Uh, but spirituality, I definitely would say I'm spiritual. Um, 
That's like a whole nother podcast discussion. Yeah. Yeah. That is a big one. We're just talking about generalities. You know, I actually, yeah. yeah. And yeah. like yeah. the news wise, I don't, I try not to even watch the news. I know I need to be oh aware, yeah. but it's all bad news all the time and it <laughs> stresses people out and makes people crazy. And I think we really need to just focus on the good in the world instead of the bad. And I think the news only focuses on the bad so mm. i mean i think we're definitely really divided in this mm -hmm. country and that is i mean we can't work together if you know no one's having a discussion or willing to see the other side or compromise yeah. or budge in their opinions <laughs> yeah. uh but hopefully soon and then <laughs> It affects the aging process. It aids you more mm -hmm. when everybody is stressed more. out. Yeah. And then that's the stressors that we kind of deal with too nowadays because you're always wondering, is World War Three coming? Is this the end of times <laughs> coming? Yes. Is this my last day on earth today? Am I going to be able to see tomorrow? Like, you know. Yeah, we will. There always is the what ifs and everything, <laughs> but uh -huh. you always want to stay away from those negative influences because you know mm. news is is controlled and you only hear what they want to hear you don't hear the good in the world and there's so much more positive that goes on mm -hmm. that's not announced mm -hmm. and really if if we keep focusing on all those negative stressors yeah. It is. It's only going to age us more because it's going to worry us more. Is this going to happen? Is that going to happen? But look on the positive side of what we're, uh, other countries or other people are doing. And then all of a sudden, you know, that gets mm -hmm. really swept under a table, not announced. And it's actually really relatively more important to hear that good that mm -hmm. happens mm -hmm. rather than focus on all that negative that goes on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and negative. So you see, that's another big source of really of stress. It's actually the main source of stress right now. And again, I cannot overemphasize that stress is really a very big factor in accelerating your aging process. It will produce anything and everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think the, the stress. Media. I think the social media is, is playing and having an impact because I, I, I think that times are way easier now than they were. Mm -hmm. I think it's, this is the easiest. I mean, it's like like the easiest what times like, yeah. like I mean, people I, I read history about like World War Two and stuff that, that, that I wouldn't want to be in. I, I trade I would trade off for this time now than that time. Yeah. Uh, so I don't really concern myself. I think that everything's just like already happened it's happening again it's the same cycle over and over and over again. Mm. and um, yeah. and I think that right now it's an easy time and I think it, that if people fall for it yeah then that's the way it goes yeah. whatever it's a short life okay yeah. but um but I, I don't know I don't I don't really take to it too much to all the stuff going mm -hmm. on I, I hope that people eventually just like you know we don't we can actually just sit down we don't actually have to do anything yeah, you know? just let it happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, and and I agree with that. This is the best time to be around on this, on this earth, because everything everything is changing. Everything is, I mean, it's easy to gain access to. <laughs> so but, easy. Yeah, it's so easy. And and if you are going to evolve in any way, in whatever way. In whatever it is that you're doing, whether you evolve as a human being or something else, <laughs> the, the, I, I think this is the best time, you know. And I can actually say, or probably say, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm glad that I'm, I'm around at this time of, uh, in this time of history or uh, this time of our existence, that you know you can actually see how things are actually changing and all that. And and probably, you know, we see this as stress, but uh, if you just take that, uh, what do you call this, that view we're in, this is probably it's just something that needs to happen. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is as if it's a movie that you just have to watch and let it evolve and let it, you know, mm -hmm. just happen mm -hmm. it's a different and perspective then, from from each country like the united yeah. states it's 
What? This, this is Definitely like this is easy living. I mean, compared the, to the rest of the world. You guys, I'm. You know, I wasn't born here, and so I know how it is to be mm-hmm. from another country. This is. It, you guys are very spoiled here. You know, when you mm-hmm. talk about poverty, you right. you really don't know what poverty is like mm-hmm. in other countries, and you you don't realize how lucky you are to be here. This is the greatest country in the world right now, yeah. and uh, there's and and the way that people are behaving. And this is my just my opinion. Doesn't have to uh, people don't have to believe me. Doubt whether it is, but you know people don't appreciate just because and the reason why they say it, but the way people are bickering and you know like shooting one another. No, that's not appreciation of what good things you have here. Mm-hmm. Because when you do that, then you divide everything and you polarize people. Mm-hmm. You, the energy is like two different you know, social things. Media. Yeah. Social media makes these, like Facebook, these conversations or so. Like yeah. People write their whole diary on there and they want to discuss this whole discussion. And, but if really they sat like this and sat down in front of each other, that discussion would change immediately. They would find a yeah. like easier ground. Mm-hmm. But you can't mm-hmm. have that ground. There's this more, there's this intense connection happening electronically mm-hmm. yeah. visually but not spiritually or emotionally mm-hmm. uh, so the connection's missing in those areas which and it's showing it's obvious people are like yeah. getting like oh look his whole life is great he's got uh, look at these people. <laughs> everybody's got a good social me. media great oh, no. yeah. Uh, yeah. in all yeah. reality your life is probably mm-hmm. you're unhappy you're you're you might not so really, social media could be your falsetto mm-hmm. to have everyone else think you're happy-go-lucky, and mm-hmm. and honestly, mm-hmm. you're probably broken inside and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. unhappy. But whatever you want to share on social media is still it's your business. To you. yeah. It's mm-hmm. your, yeah. you know, people are gonna read it and when it's when it's on there. It's there. Mm-hmm. But all the bickering is coming from the social media, like. Yeah. like Trump tweeted or, or Facebook. Twitter. Or, 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 I, I was sitting yeah. down. Twitter I was, or Instagram. Yeah. It's I was not sitting, really that. Yeah, I, yeah. Facebook, definitely. Mm. Yeah, I was sitting down at a pizzeria out in Melbourne, and this, this this woman comes up, and they recognize each other and they're talking. The whole time, they were talking about this argument they had with another person that's not even with them in the conversation on Facebook. Yeah. And I looked at them both, and I said, you guys need to get off Facebook. Like, she's at work or something. What are you doing? And they looked at me like, you guys need to eat your pizza. Like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you say it to my face and not online? Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's really... A- a decision or it's up to people how they're going to use this you know this um yeah platform or how they're going to use the social media because we always the main thing that is we the decision is ours we always have the choice mm-hmm. we have the choice how we're gonna do it how we're gonna use it and how we're gonna behave in it you know if you if you you know choose to have a positive impact impact to people then that's the thing that you have to do but a lot of times you have to be aware as well you think you're making a positive impact and the effect is actually something else and so but I think that a lot of people go into that also it's, it's like a form of escape no mm-hmm. it is yeah because they don't have this reality in their own mm-hmm. life and it, it's like I know it's dangerous, but it's also safe for them, for some people to be in it, you know, because you're not there physically mm-hmm. or what have you. It's a connection that yeah. wouldn't otherwise be there. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's kind of like a mask. So, like, people will say things online that they would never say in person, like Stephen kind of mentioned. Uh-huh. So, yeah. <laughs> so, um, what do you call this? Actually, my... Uh, I have to see patients, so um, <laughs> what I um yeah we we we, uh, we, we have like to. twenty more minutes. Oh yeah, I have it. I want to. <laughs> is he is saying we have twenty more minutes? I uh, what time do I see patients? At nine o'clock. What time? Good night. Uh, you, you guys have to remember we have a big training today, so. 
Uh, somebody warned me already. You have to write like boom, 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 boom. It's stressing me out when they push me like that. Uh, yeah, but it's, I, I don't let do. it. Yeah, I don't let it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> at least that's a good thing. Today is Friday, TGIF. Yeah. But I would like the last 20 minutes. So uh, you being the millennial you. <laughs> Are you looking at me or that? <laughs> uh, all of you. I'm just looking at you, but this is for the three of you, obviously. So what can you say to the... Uh, to that generation behind you? And even the generation ahead of you. No, you have to say something. What oh. What do you think? What do you feel? I don't know. It could be something that they should be doing or they should have done if it's the people ahead of you. Oh, that's me. Okay, tell me <laughs> what I should do at this point. Um, you know, from your point of view. It doesn't have to be the point of view of everybody and it doesn't have to be my f point of view. You know, because my point of view is going to be very different from you, mm -hmm. <laughs> obviously. Yeah, okay. Uh, I think that both generations above and, and below us are actually doing a, a great job in kind of coming with the change, especially the generation behind us um, are more aware of, you know, climate change and, and the environment, and I think that the uh, generation behind us are really going to push that as they get older and become in positions of power mm -hmm. and uh, leaders in our country. Um, I definitely think that they have, you know, what it takes. And I think the generation, you know, ahead of us, like, either you're with it or you're not. And I don't really know if there's a gray area. There's a lot of people who are, you know, accepting, willing to change and, and have different uh, perspectives, viewpoints, even spirituality. Um, thinking of my parents especially, mm. you know, growing up they were raised one way, that's how things were done, this is what we eat, blah, blah, blah. But they've really tried to change their diet based on, you know, everything um, environment-wise. So I think both generations are doing pretty <laughs> Good. <laughs> For the most really part, doing yeah. yeah. And, you know, Honestly, I, mean. I think the generation before us has prepared us and they've warned us. You know, at 30, this stops your weight gains, this and that and this and that. And if you listen to those, I don't want to say mm -hmm. warnings mm -hmm. or listen to their beliefs almost, beliefs yeah. there and, and see it. Mm -hmm. You can understand it when you're going through it. So when you're talking to the generation that's following us, you really, they're also influencers because a lot of them are on social media. So they are blogging, they're talking a lot more, and they're in your face a lot more than maybe my, my generation uh, or or this this day and age like we're all getting into it so we're influencing even the younger and next generation following that so you really want to start being an example of what you really want to stand up for whether it's your health your beliefs your your spiritual spirituality whether it be your political beliefs too because times do change and things are changing so mm -hmm. you really do want to follow it but you learn from our previous generation and kind of try to be another influence on mm -hmm. or a role model to people that's coming into this day and age at least it's Mm -hmm. so I agree. And you? I agree. I agree. I'm, I'm like I'm old school with a lot of things. So you're old school already. Yeah, I'm old, <laughs> I, I like, I mean, I'm old school. I um, oh no, no, in the, don't have a in, the <laughs> yeah, in the ideology, like um, ide ideologically, <laughs> I'm old school. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't like rigidity in things. Like I'm not a big fan. As I'm spiritual. Uh, I'm not a religious person, but I'm spiritual. I have been a missionary. I've done those things. But I don't like rigidity in things. And I don't mm -hmm. like hierarchies or anything like that. I don't like rules either. 
so I always avoid it. So that's an old, the old school, isn't that? Hey, Pythagoras was the same way, right? The what? So Pythagoras was the same way. Okay. But um, but what what I was gonna say is I'm old school in the sense that um, you know, like that old that that those, those sayings like um, your elders have the mm-hmm. wisdom. I'm a big believer in like passing along wisdom through the elders and through the, those those types of ways. I I think that um, I I I like documenting people that have been through it. I like filming stories and hearing stories and these types mm-hmm. of things, um, bonfire story type of things of, of the past and of situations that mm-hmm. have happened and occurred. Um, so, uh, if I'm going to tell somebody what they should do, because um, I, I don't, I'm not good at that, but I, I would say for the older generation, the generation before me, um, tell more stories. You know, tell tell your life, tell your stories. That we want to hear them, and. Um, for the generation after me, or I think yeah, the one yeah, ahead, of, ahead, you. Of, me, ahead yeah, of you. Um, I would tell them to listen more. Really? Uh, like specifically? Uh, listen, listen. Yeah, listen. Just don't, listen. Don't, yeah, no, I don't. Anything. I don't. Their opinions are okay, you know. But like, mm-hmm. they, you know, I, personally, I think that it's better to be of service. If you want to be of service in this world, you need to listen and learn from mm-hmm. those who have been here before you. And mm-hmm. it's really important. I think you know, I learned a lot from elders, and I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get stuck on the judgment of it. You mean us listening uh, to you, or you listening to us, Amazing. or both? I mean, like to, to listening to uh, like the older generation, like listening to their stories and, and what they've been through, and observing more, like not judging but observing and understanding. Like, I don't have a political ideology, so it's easier for me to be like, oh, I don't roll my eyes at, like, somebody's political beliefs because I don't have one. I don't have an ideology that I take sides on. So it made it easier for me to under- uh, to, to listen yeah. more objectively. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really important for college students right now because they're all hurting, literally hurting in a certain direction. Yeah. And I, and I feel like it's, it's closing their peri- peripherals uh-huh. to, like, what they can really learn uh-huh. and what they can understand. And they're they're, list, they're learning from each other, but there's a mm-hmm. whole generation ahead of them that they've also learned from, without you know without mm-hmm. casting judgment upon like the situations that are occurring now politically, uh, sociologically, environmentally. Um, th- there's a lot that can be learned that way. I just think that it should be passed mm-hmm. along. Things should be passed along. That's mm-hmm. how nature really is set up. You see, the uh, generation behind you, the one following you. They have uh, uh, more choices, meaning if they want to know something, I mean, we've been talking about social media, which is a very good source of all the information, whether good or bad. And so I guess, yeah, they have to listen more and actually use discrimination, not in a bad way, then which one that they really have to inculcate or, or... what are the things that they have to follow or they have to assimilate mm. or something. And, uh, community building. Like it's, yeah. it's like there's, there was vill- like there's tr- like in a tribal sense, it's, 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 um, you know, you're passed along these things and you, you understand that the, that there's a cultural understanding that there's mm-hmm. a passing along. There's, there's knowledge passed along. There's things passed along. Mm-hmm. There's respect. There's honor. There's all these things. They're very mm-hmm. important. I, they're extremely important. And the, 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 like, you can learn through the internet, but honestly, there's very little magic in, in, in that way sometimes when you're just doing, when you're seeing only what you want to watch, you know, instead yeah. of letting the flow come to you naturally. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so I think that that's just, you know, yeah. I just how I look at it. But, but- the generation ahead of you, what can you tell them? Yeah. What can you tell me? The, the ahead of me? Yeah. Yeah, I would say lis- listen and, and listen mm-hmm. to people. Don't cast judgment um, based on just the mm-hmm. one simple little belief or one little thing that you feel is off. Yeah. Because cause the popular, you know, don't yield to trends, fads, and popular opinion, basically. Mm. But you can say that to the one behind you. I mean, the generation younger than you. This is that's what thing. I'm saying it to the younger generation. Yeah. Don't but, be able to transfer yeah. the younger opinion. But the one ahead of you, what can you... Wait, what? The, the, the generation ahead of oh, you, the older, the older one, yeah. 
I say tell your stories. Share your stories. Share your stories. Mm-hmm. Share your oh, knowledge. So, it, so they have to listen mm-hmm. and observe. And they have to share. And then the one ahead of you, yeah. you have to tell your story. Yeah, they have to, feel, okay. com- they have to feel, feel comfortable that they're not going to be judged when they speak, when they sp- mm-hmm. speak about something. You know, and feel comfortable because that's how it should be. Mm-hmm. I mean, in my opinion. So if I'm going to say should, that's how it should be, in my opinion. That's how it is in the rest of nature, the rest of yeah. animals. Every, all of nature is like that. It's been like that for yeah. millennia. For, uh, and all of a sudden now it's like, mm-hmm. you know, it's kind of shifting. Uh, okay. Probably this question is not going to be, I don't know if, I'm not sure if this is fair or what have you. Which gen- generation you think should lead? Should we lead? <laughs> yeah, should lead. Yeah, should lead. I don't want to say our younger generation. Older generation. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. No. I mean, how old? I mean, uh, from your perspective, the older generation is going to be starting, you know, from me up to the older one. I mean, it's just, it, it's just a question that came to my mind, you know. I think... I, like, I agree with Stephen about older generation telling your story, passing it down. But I think at the same time, in at least the U.S. and the way things are, people are so stuck in their own opinion without having an open mind that it would, you know, if the older generation is like, I am this, I am that, I'm not budging from this, and you can't change my mind about that. Well, that's not a way to lead, and I wouldn't want that yeah. person as a leader uh-huh. but someone who's older who has stories and experience who also has an open mind then absolutely I would follow them <laughs> mm. so it has nothing to do I guess with the generation yeah. something to do with the person or whatever it doesn't matter what generation it is or something well, I, I think but, so <clears throat> I think that the young person shouldn't mm-hmm. be leading leading everybody else because they don't have the experience yeah. yeah so then you need both <laughs> uh-huh. you do but but would you agree that agree. the rigidity is more of the older ones the rigidity yeah they yeah. when uh, they're rigid in their beliefs just oh, because I think both. they they have so both. much experience i think mm-hmm. both i think both because are. one's already mm-hmm. set in their ways and yeah. one's already influenced by Mm. older generations but they want to still keep their own beliefs and modify it Mm -hmm. so not in that sense it's not always a Mm. positive it's human nature that's that's an that's an that's an issue of human nature uh, not of age yeah probably some people are already thinking uh, they're supposed to be discussing about the aging process and why is she asking about who's going to lead my point here is because the aging process, you know, each generation, uh, the changes are not only in your physical body, but it gets translated to what e- you do, depending on the ability of, number one, of, of course, the brain. Mm-hmm. Our brain changes significantly as you approach each uh, stage of life. You know, at at 10, at 20, at 30, at 40, at 50, at 60, 70, 80, 90. I mean, obviously, it's very, um, I don't have to tell you that medically, a 90-year-old, you don't expect that, you know, you don't expect that 90-year-old to think the way you do because the mental capacity, because the brain has already shrunk a lot, it's not going to be the same. I, I mean, that's the point. So what I want... Uh, for everybody to understand that the aging process will express itself in a different, uh, what what do you call the spectrum or different um, uh, things depending on the age that you're you're in, on different generation that you're in. So I just want to emphasize that. And a lot of people, I don't even have to emphasize this. You're going to see it. It's very obvious that as you age, our ability to do anything and to think about anything um, changes. And so the expression of that in any segment, in any part of life or any uh, thing in your life will be different. Will be different. And so that aging process affects us. So you have to think about that. 
And that's why I know it's a little bit unfair to, to ask that question, uh, who should lead? Mm -hmm. But it has a lot to do with how your physical body changes. Mm -hmm. This is like a container, no? I, I just think that the, that we won't survive if, if, if the, pop gen, if the older gen, if the generation with the with the experience can't mm -hmm. lead, then we yeah. won't make it. I mean, it's as simple as that, in my opinion. It's like if if, if we can't like as humans, yeah, figure that out. How how to actually not uh -huh. be rigid and not be. I, you know, I, I think this is just at, at this stage of my life too. I I can I can see. I guess my uh, my bird's eye view is a little different because I treat the the very old and the kind of you guys and I've treated the very young as well. The uh, I think the older ones should be advising because as you as you pointed out, they have to tell their stories. You know, their stories and their experiences may not be applicable anymore to what we have right now. You know, if you want to keep on going forward, what? We need new ideas. We need innovation. Yeah. This might be an, an unfair to say, but I will just say this is factual. An older brain, a lot of times, a lot of times, and... I'm, this may not be accepted by some people or maybe a lot of people because that's human nature that you will not admit that you don't have that ability or capacity anymore. They cannot come up with new ideas. They think they can, but they cannot. Uh, and that's applicable to me. And when I get to that point wherein I cannot come up with new ideas in medicine, then I will stay in the background and I will advise the younger generation based on my experience. Whether you take it or you do it, then it's up to you. It's your decision. But that's how it is. You have to think about your brain like a battery. I mean, you can only charge or recharge it so many times and up to a point. And after that, it goes. And so... How are you going to power up your machine if your battery is so low? And even if you charge it, it's not charging anymore. Mm -hmm. the, those are the facts. By, by, by telling the yeah. stories, I think that... Yeah, by we, telling the by, stories... By going back to your memories, going back, yeah. it helps your brain yeah. come active again. I, I agree. Uh, I agree with that. And that's why we need the older... Uh, folks mm -hmm. to tell us their stories and their experiences and based on that you know you kind of you avoid mistakes hopefully not that it's we need to make mistakes too because that's how you learn that's the process learn. of learning <clears throat> there's, there's, so yeah and there's everybody has something to offer it's like mm -hmm. you know if you don't have all, if you can't remember all this knowledge you've had or whatnot yeah. Then just be the comforting person you are. A good exactly. Heart and so on. I mean, it's, so, it's exactly. all good. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's just how people take it. Yeah. People, exactly. You know, it's just. So everybody has his or her, her own role in the process of aging. You know, in the process of aging, depending on what stage you are, mm -hmm. there's always something that you can contribute, and you know, it, it goes back to you know what's your strong point or what your strong capabilities and abilities at this stage of your life or at the stage of aging, you know? Mm -hmm. So, well, I have to see patient. <laughs> <laughs> we have to start seeing patient. Bree <laughs> is our nurse practitioner. Eileen is our head nurse. So we all have to see patient. Mm -hmm. I hope we contributed something today. You know, it's always good. I know it's about aging process, but we go uh, yeah. everywhere. But that's that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. I like it like that. That mm -hmm. we're having a conversation and uh, you know, yeah. come up with different ideas and different mm -hmm. opinions. Um, you may take it or not take it or criticize it, but we're just here. Number one, to give information, and then number two. 
I don't know, to entertain you. <laughs> entertain you. And it, I don't know, if you have, um, what do you call this, any question, you can also post it. And I don't know, are we, um, are we posting this on YouTube? Yeah, but it's not live. It's not <laughs> yeah, live. it's not live, but yeah, it's going to be on YouTube. Live. Uh, right now we're live on Facebook. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we're live on Facebook. <laughs> oh my God, I like it. At least I so, hope you are. Uh, you know, I'm looking, <laughs> I'm looking at the, uh, you know, some of the podcasts or what have you. Okay, click the like button or click the subscribe. Click so, the like button. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Love yeah. us. <laughs> yeah. So, well, uh, it's okay. Yeah, no, it's going. Yeah, yeah. it's going. Yeah. Is it we're live? We're still live. Oh, so, my God. okay. It's just focused right. on my face, though. All right. Yeah, the whole video is no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, nice. you guys want to open that wine? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he actually has some wine, you know. Uh, uh, so we have to we have to close for now, and it's a very nice morning and. We have to see patient. It's Friday, so make sure you beautiful people, nice people, mm, let's gather and make this world a very positive place to live in. And uh, don't forget to just spread happiness, joy, and inspire everybody. That's actually the main thing of this podcast. I hope that we are inspiring you and whether it's in a small way or big way or enormous way then yeah and we love you all mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay bye Oh yeah. That's oh, amazing. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's my that's first one. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll have more.